All right, well, good morning. Uh, my name is Marcus Coleman, founder and president of Save Ourselves. Uh, but more importantly, I am a, a student uh, of the gentleman who is ironically a victim. Uh, Dr. Joseph Beasley, uh, this past Wednesday, uh, we literally are coming back to the scene of the crime. He was trying to turn into his office uh, at Antioch Baptist Church. Uh, we understand that there was a, uh, a narcotics warrant that was being executed by APD. Uh, for the record, I want to make sure it's understood, Dr. 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 Beasley is an 82-year-old Air Force veteran. He is a global human rights living legend icon. Uh, Dr. Beasley was attempted to come into his office and was met with officers that were executing this warrant. Uh, naturally, uh, and I believe the makeup of the, the officers was SWAT and even mask on their faces. So naturally, he inquired, you know, what is going on here? Uh, he was told to back up. He inquired, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to my office. What is going on here? Uh, at that point in time, Officer Hansen pulled his service pistol and aimed at the head of this Atlanta native living legend. Uh, at that point in time, Dr. Beasley backed up, stayed on the scene, made a couple of calls, and then went through the proper channels of filing a complaint. Uh, since then, Dr. Beasley has received a call from Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. Uh, the next morning, Dr. Beasley was uh, visited by uh, Chief Shields and four of her top decorated officers and even the officer that pulled the pistol uh, all apologizing. I think I can speak on behalf of this group to say that the apology is nice but that is far from sufficient. We are calling for the resignation of this officer or better yet the firing of this officer. Uh, the basis for that I think speaks for itself in his actions. His actions are are reckless, they are actions unbecoming, uh, they are unpredictable, and they are extremely dangerous. If he was to pull his pistol at this elderly senior citizen who was trying to simply get into his office, uh, it is our belief that he is a ticking time bomb and no telling what he has done. We look forward to reviewing his record, but what he will do. Uh, we're, we live in a state right now, most of us here, all of us here, are engaged in combating police misconduct, police brutality, police terrorism. Uh, the, the, the irony is here we have a uh, trial that is happening here for former officer Olson uh, for the murder, which many of us feel, uh, of the, of the uh, Air Force veteran Anthony Hill, the butt ball naked, unarmed black male gunned down by this officer because he felt threatened. Well, even though we are Thankful that Dr. Beasley is still here with us today. Any wrong move by Dr. Beasley and we could be having a vigil instead of a press conference. I mean, any wrong move by Dr. Beasley uh, could have called, resulted in cardiac arrest, could have resulted in a number of medical issues. Again, this is an 82-year-old senior citizen. So we got a couple of people here that we uh, have asked to shed some words. <coughs> But we want to make sure that we are in unison today. Even though Dr. Beasley, I know, is very appreciative of the uh, apology. And just let me say this. It's, it's, a, it's an honor uh, for a young man like myself to even be asked to be a spokesperson for someone who sure don't need it. Um, but to be quite honest, this has been traumatizing for Dr. Beasley. To be quite honest, uh, Dr. Beasley had to consult with his doctor that evening and has had problems sleeping since then. Uh, and to be quite honest, that was very hurtful for a person like me. I think many of us here, if we were put in a certain situation, we would give our life for this man. I think I say that with 100% certainty. So uh, a message to Chief Shields, even a message to Keisha Lance Bottom. Uh, the apology was nice, but it's not sufficient. We want this officer fired. And to be quite honest, we would like him brought up on charges. And we are also calling for a meeting with select people of this group because we want to have a, a hand in implementing policy change uh, as it relates to APD. Last thing, uh, we want any officer that pulls his, or thinks about pulling his pistol prematurely and putting it in the face of innocent civilians, when this is all said and done, we want you to think about the name Joe Beasley before you do that. Uh, with that said, 
We will bring up a couple of folks, and then at the end, we will have Dr. Beasley give some very uh, brief words. Uh, first up, I'd like to call someone that's very special to Dr. Beasley and myself, uh, former president of the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus, uh, candidate for former candidate for Secretary of State of this uh, uh, state of Georgia, uh, D. Dawkins Hagan. Yeah. Good morning, and again, I am here in solidarity with all of our brothers and sisters in the struggle. And we have to be careful about what messages that we send, not only to something that happened to Dr. Beasley, because he is connected to all of us. Yes. But what will happen to that person who may not have the notoriety that Dr. Beasley may have? They may have been killed on the street immediately and wouldn't have had the reinforcement that is behind him right now. So we have to not only look at the police department, but a system that is corrupted from the top to the bottom, not just in Atlanta. Uh -huh. We have to look at policing across America and what we need to collectively do about that. So I'm calling on all of my former colleagues in the Georgia General Assembly to look at legislation to address and remedy situations where police officers feel that like they have open reign to do whatever they want to do at any time. The job is to be to protect and to serve, not to harass, to kill, or intimidate. So we will not stand for this. We are here, and we really want to see the Atlanta Police Department, as well as all of the police systems, uh, criminal justice systems around the country, look at 21st century policing in America. That being said, no justice, no peace. We stand with Dr. Beasley, and he is just like family to us, and we will not, under any circumstance, allow this to go without it being totally redressed appropriately, and that is with the resignation of the officer. Thank you. Uh, we also will be taking legal action. Uh, there is a uh, coalition of attorneys, but co-counsel that will be representing uh, Dr. Beasley. To speak more about that, I'd like to bring up attorney Mowley Mel Davis. Good morning. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Beasley. At his request, our law firm typically, and this is the reality, is that we get so many calls of incidents similar to Mr. Beasley that we have had to restrict our practice to those who have been killed or murdered by police. So that's how often something like this happens. But when Mr. Beasley calls, and this is done to someone who has fought and lived and struggled his entire life, to stop police brutality, we decided that we had to become involved. Uh, we are looking forward to working with Attorney Benjamin Crump on this as we move forward. We intend on uh, bringing a lawsuit on Mr. Beasley's behalf and suing the city of Atlanta and this office. And so we hope that this will lead to policy changes for the city. And we've said and we continue to say that the law has its limitations, but the people are limitless in our power. And so to stand with this coalition of activists and organizers as we venture out on a legal remedy, uh, we are thankful, grateful, and prepared to move forward and look forward to working with Brother Beasley and all of these organizers to bring about change uh, for the city of Atlanta Police Department and police departments across the state and country. So thank you. It's been stated over and over again, Dr. Beasley has not just affected many of our lives, he has helped shape and mold them. Uh, at this point in time, I'd like to bring up uh, Tim Franzen, uh, a community organizer that's very well respected. Uh, but I heard him say that he would not be the man he is or the organizer he is if it wasn't for Dr. Beasley. So, Tim Franzen. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is good? Just leave it right here. Uh, well, I was out of town when, when this happened, uh, but when I heard, I was horrified. And, um, you know, we all stand on the shoulders of somebody else and a lineage of folks. But in, in my personal life, uh, there is no greater mentor to me than this man, Joe Beasley. And uh, to hear what happened, it reminded me of a reality. You know, we can say that this is, this is racism. Uh, it's 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 uh, unjust, but the reality is, is that this is, is apartheid. Um, this is simply something that I don't have to worry about driving around. Uh, this is simply something that I don't have to worry about when I'm driving around. Um, you know, my worst case scenario is getting a speeding ticket, but I don't worry about getting a gun waved in my hand. And uh, so to know that 
the person that taught me how to organize communities, to negotiate uh, power, and, and to win stuff for those that need it most uh, is getting a gun waved around right here, right, right here in this corner, uh, a block from his church, right. a block from his office, a community that he's been a part of the fabric of since before I was born. Uh, that's something that just doesn't sit well with me. And I don't think it should sit well with anybody. And so this kind of apartheid is something that we have to fight. And, uh, you know, I'm ready for my marching orders. Mm -hmm. Yep. This time we'll hear from nationally recognized poet and organizer, Brother Hank Stewart. It is the responsibility of the conscious to make the unconscious conscious of their unconscious behavior. That's what Dr. Beasley has done. He's made us conscious. And to think that there was an opportunity for him not to be here today saddens all of us. Um, I think there's only one thing to say. The officer needs to be gone, and it needs to be training. He needs right. to be gone. And that's 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 it. I'm, I'm going to say it like we said on my side of town. He needs to be gone. We don't need to be here talking about this. He needs to be gone because we don't know what he's done prior and what, like, uh, Mark, Mark said what he can be doing tomorrow or later today. So we stand with Mr. Beasley, all of us stand with Mr. Beasley, and not only Mr. Beasley, but any person who's unnamed, uh, who's unnamed, and there's a whole lot of, you know, you, you look at this and there's a whole lot of black men who have, um, we, you know, we don't know, they're, they're missing and they're dead and we don't know how it happened. And so with Mr. Beasley, we know it, he lived to tell the story, and so we, we stand in solidarity with him. Unmerited suffering is redemptive. Before the unmerited suffering is redemptive. Before the next, before the next speaker, I think it's important to understand why we came back to the scene of the crime, uh, because this is considered a downtrodden area of Atlanta. You know, Collected. this here, not even two miles up the road, you've got damn near a two billion dollar stadium, mm -hmm. and you look at the surrounding community. Uh, I dare to believe that if this would have been on Peachtree Street or Buckhead or any any other area up north, even if Dr. Beasley would have traveled through there, they would have treated him different. They feel like they can do whatever they want to do to us in these type of communities. And these what opportunity zone communities that the administration has coined. Uh, so we just need some equality when it comes to the training. APD has already separ separated themselves from this officer saying that the pulling of his pistol is not consistent. So we just want to reiterate again, if you have to separate yourself in a public statement with an employee of yours, uh, we need him gone, in the brother, words of Brother Hank Stewart. Uh, up next, I think it's important to show this, the, the wide spectrum uh, of Dr. Beasley's tentacles and influence. Uh, there are so-called grassroots organizers. I really don't even like that term. Uh, but we have grandfather civil rights organizations present. We've got folks that represent those grassroots organizations. And they have very much been concerned with Dr. Beasley. I believe the son of Fred Hampton is actually called to check to see about this uh, press conference. But with that said, I'd like to bring up uh, Brother Kalanji of FTP. Good morning. Um, less than uh, in 2006, less than a mile away from here, mm. 933 Neal Street, a 92-year-old woman was gunned down by the Atlanta PD. Captain Johnson. Captain Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She was gunned down in her home, in her own home, and she was criminalized. Here we are, 13 years later, and we have a civil rights icon, 82 years old, who was having a gun put to his face. We feel that that's a travesty. The actions of Officer Hansen proves that he is reckless, he is yeah. disrespectful, they have no respect for our elders, clearly. If you can murder a 92-year-old, and then without being sensitive at all, 13 years later, put a gun in the face of an 82-year-old, it shows that Atlanta Police Department has absolutely no respect for our elders or its citizens, okay? Um, Officer Hansen is a thug. When you wave a gun in the face of an innocent person, you're a thug, you're a criminal, and he should be treated like one. If Brother Beasley would have pointed a pistol in anyone's face that doesn't look like him, then he'd be dead right now. You understand what I'm saying? So we feel 
that Officer Hanson should be fired. I don't, speaking on behalf of my organization, I don't believe in no sensitivity training because of the fact that we know they're insensitive. Mm -hmm. You have plenty of training gunning down individuals throughout the United States. During this time period, right now, with police terrorism being at an all-time high, you would think that officers would take their time on how they're going to deal with black citizens. Right. But clearly it doesn't matter. So we're calling for the firing of Officer Hanson, this 30-year-old thug, and we're also calling on um, calling to sh shut this situation down. You know what I mean? We think that he should be dismissed immediately. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for the record, when Dr. Beasley was on the scene, Dr. Beasley informed the sergeant, the correct sir? Called 911, but he also uh, on the scene, you know, said that this officer need to be disarmed. Uh, you gotta applaud again just the fearlessness uh, of this gentleman. Uh, with that said, I'd like to bring up uh, a well-known attorney here in this city, uh, Attorney Gerald Griggs. I must say that I'm saddened to have to be here today in this community standing up for a civil rights legend and an icon. And, and like Kalanji just said, not more than a decade ago, we dealt with the same issue with the city of Atlanta. And we continue to deal with the same issue. Luckily, Dr. Beasley survived. But for the countless individuals who have not survived, that have gone unaccounted for, we need justice. Mm -hmm. And so I've met with the mayor on two occasions. I met with the police chief on three occasions. It's time for change. It's time to fire Officer Hanson the same way you fired the officer in Maggie Thomas's case. It's time to hold law enforcement accountable. This is ridiculous. For a civil rights legend to have to worry about having a gun pulled in his face by a public servant is ridiculous. So we at the NAACP, both the state and the Atlanta chapter stand in lockstep with uh, <coughs> Dr. Beasley and everyone uh, arranged in this coalition and we're sending a message directly to the mayor. It's time to address this problem. Whether it's Jimmy Atchison or Joe Beasley, whether it's Jamarian Robinson or Joe Beasley, right. whether it's Veltavius Griggs or Joe Beasley, right. whether it's Oscar Kane or Joe Beasley, right. this is mm. not an isolated problem. Mm. Apex is the new red dog. Mm. I'm gonna say that again. Apex mm. is the new red dog. Mm. So Chief Shields, Mayor Bottoms, an apology is not enough. It's time to fire that officer, retrain the command staff, and implement the 21st Century Policing Initiative that was convened and reported in 2015. This is ridiculous. So we are going to say this in one clear voice. It stops today. Mm. We've been saying it, we've been marching it, we've been, we've been protesting, we've been shutting stuff down. But when I see it come across my phone and then I get texts and calls about what happened with Dr. Beasley, it's time for this city to be what it says. We are the birthplace of civil rights, but why is a civil rights legend being subjected to this in an underserved neighborhood? It's time to do for the people what you promised to do for the people. And that's listen to the people. So Mayor Bottoms, it's past time to address this issue. Phone calls aren't enough. It's time for legislation. You can re-implement the bill that was attempted to be passed by former Representative Kwanzaa Hall addressing broken windows and 21st century policing. You can do that tomorrow. That's what we're asking you to do. We have just a couple of more speakers and then we'll take questions. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to make sure that the, 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 the timeline of what happened on that day are understood. Uh, Dr. Beasley was actually scheduled to be with myself and Councilman Khalid Kamal, who is president of South Fulton, uh, off of Old National Highway at 3.30 with the local network here uh, to discuss the recent militarization of South Fulton's baby new police department. Uh, that morning, Dr. Beasley spoke with the mayor of South Fulton, uh, encouraged him to take some action against the police chief at South Fulton for the recent purchasing of a militarized vehicle known as a Bearcat. Later on that morning, 
Dr. Beasley got into an initial heated exchange, but cooler heads prevailed with the police chief. Uh, and in that conversation, Dr. Beasley stated that we are a peaceful people and the police departments need to exercise a, a, a show of love, a show of peace. And then two hours later, he has a pistol stuck in his face from APD. Those were the events that led up uh, to this. With that said, I'd like to bring up a uh, good friend of all of ours, uh, Reverend Mott. When Jesus was on his way to Calvary, not for doing the wrong thing, but for doing the right thing. Not for hating, but for loving. Not for taking, but for giving. When he was on his way to Calvary, the women lined the streets and they were weeping. And he turned to them, he stopped in the midst of his trek toward Calvary. And he said these words, weep not for me, hmm. but weep for yourselves and for your children. Hmm. Because if they do this to a green tree, hmm. what will they do to a dry? Joe Beasley is a green tree. Amen. Catherine Johnston mm, mm, mm. was a green tree. When that officer did what he did to our beloved, they didn't know that it was a person who was known around the world. They didn't know he was I, Joe Beasley. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that he was a man who has stood for justice yes. and equality and, and fair play. They didn't know that he was one of the principal persons in Rainbow Push. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just thought he was another. Mm. Mm. Say it. Say it. Right. Another Nick. That's right. mm. And the Bible also says this be careful how you entertain strangers, how you treat strangers, because some have entertained angels unaware. Once again, we stand here on behalf of one of our beloved. The culture of killing in the Atlanta Police Department and in the nation has to change. Yeah, exactly. The nation is changing. And pretty soon there will be a majority minority country. Real soon. And everything will shift from where it is now. And those who are in the majority now will be in the minority. Most of you who are behind those cameras, on behalf of the news media, the same thing could have happened to you. Men and women alike. And so help us change the culture within the press, change the culture within the police department. God said this, and he didn't leave it in the hands of all of society. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and I'll hear this heal their land. Let this be that moment when transformation takes place. Let this be that moment when repentance takes place within the police department. Not just 
saying I'm sorry, not just apologizing in words, but transforming the culture from one of killing to kindness, yes. from one of hatred to love, yes. to one of discrimination to decency. that I want to make sure we touch on. You know, if, if, if the response from APD can be that this officer did not uh, act according to training, you know, you, you always hear that it's just a couple of bad apples in the front. I'm one that likes to say until these so-called good officers start going to uh, the steps of uh, uh, correcting these so-called bad apples, then we got a problem. And what do I mean by that? If this officer, according to APD, did not act accordingly to, according to training, then why did the other officers not on the scene restrain him? Why did the officers on the scene not correct him? Until we eliminate this cold blue line of silence that <laughs> exists in law enforcement, until officers stop their no snitching calls, they don't have the morality to tell the community to do the same. Uh, Mr. Adams of uh, Rainbow. Uh, <clears throat> On behalf of Reverend Jesse Jackson and the Rainbow Push Coalition, right. I stand here as the bureau chief for this region. We stand with Dr. Beasley in solidarity. This is disgraceful. Yes, this is. is shameful and it's absolutely <laughs> absurd. Recently, I traveled to South Africa with this international icon I mean, Dr. Beasley, all the time we called him Reverend Beasley. But there, they gave him the red carpet. I was just absolutely ecstatic. We went to fight the injustice of South Africa. For this man to come home weeks later and be faced with injustice is shameful. We need to get rid of this officer. No officer should ever pull their weapon unless their life is threatened or the life of someone else is threatened. This man was not threatened by Dr. Beasley. This is absolutely shameful. Within a few hours, I certainly do hope that our mayor and sheriff will release this gentleman. Because if not, you will have other civil rights leaders in this city protesting for your dismissal. Mm. Mm. Right. Dr. Beasley, the founder of universities multiple in South America, Dr. Beasley in Ghana, the equivalent of being knighted in Britain in Ghana is called in skin. You're looking at this gentleman right here, right now. A couple more speakers, Councilman Khalid Kamal.